deep space to study the lost civilizations called the Seven Wonders of the Ancient World that existed long ago on Earth. Let's go on an adventure to seek out the mysteries of the Seven Wonders of the Ancient World. There is a computer that is filled with artificial intelligence that will help us on our journey. I'd like to introduce you to our partner for the trip, Allah Matter. Hello, I'm Allah Matter. I'll always be here. Just call me and I'll appear. understand the seven wonders of the ancient world, it is necessary to know the meaning of the number seven, the most mystic and complete number of all. The lunar cycle is 28 days and can be divided by seven. The people of the ancient world believed if one could understand the meaning of seven, then one could master mathematics. Seven was also a number of the cosmos. It was thought that the universe was governed by numbers. When any of seven things were assembled, it was believed they could form a complete universe. The seven wonders of the ancient world were selected because they were actual places relating to the number seven. The seven wonders of the ancient world were born from man-made mathematical science. The idea that the foundation of the universe is based upon numbers is demonstrated in proportions. Beauty is something that, when viewed from any angle, always has the same aspect ratio. Therefore, the basis of beauty is numbers. But unfortunately, we rarely find anything with such good proportions in nature. When things are placed far away, they seem smaller. When two objects are placed side by side, one always seems smaller. It is because of this that humans look beyond nature, and we're driven to build structures that adhere to the principle of numbers. These creations became a symbol of beauty. Ancient people were amazed by these structures and came to believe that objects of beauty were those made by mankind. The seven wonders of the ancient world were chosen by Pelham, a mathematician who lived around 200 BC. He chose wonders that existed at that time in the Mediterranean Sea region, or those that lay in ruins but whose incredible stories remain. His selection is extremely interesting. What compelled Felon to choose seven wonders? I believe it was directly related to the fact that he was a mathematician. In his era, mathematicians were symbolic heroes of perfection. Felon was most likely attempting to create a giant man-made space, or even something like a large city. For this, he selected the seven wonders of the ancient world. This is the first map of the seven wonders of the ancient world. By using the maze, try to find all seven maps. Whenever you don't understand what to do, just call me. Let's start from the Pyramids of Giza. This is the entrance to the Hyper Maze. These are the famous Pyramids of Egypt, built in 2500 BC by the ruler of the 4th Dynasty, King Khufu. They are located near the city of Giza. Each of the four sides faced precisely the four directions of the compass, and each of the four corners was a perfect perpendicular angle. The pyramids were covered with limestone. Each stone weighed about two and a half tons. There were 2,300,000 stones weighing 6,850 tons. Nothing like them has remained these 4,600 years. They are the oldest of the seven wonders of the ancient world. In this window, you can find information related to the seven wonders of the ancient world.
By pressing the right and left sides of the direction button, you can change the display of all the matter. Press the A button to jump to the next program. These are the famous pyramids of Egypt. Built In this window, you can find it. In this window, you can find information These are the famous pyramids of Egypt. Built the pyramids were covered with limestone. Each stone weighed... What exactly is a pyramid? It is mostly known as a large tomb. But in actuality, it was a measuring device used to keep track of time and the seasons. Many of the ancient large stone memorials served as observatories and representations of the seasons. All of them calculated the passage and flow of time. This was the function of the early pyramids. A pyramid calculated time, and that in itself made it a timeless thing, recognized as having the power to bring about the rebirth of each season. Because of this, there were cities in post-revolutionary France that built pyramids as memorials. Even today, there is a pyramid at the Louvre Museum in Paris. As an infinite object marking time, the pyramid has a large effect upon all of us, even today. Much like this one, connect the seven wonder zones. If you use the direction button correctly, you'll arrive at the next destination, Alexandria. by King Ptolemy II in Alexandria, a city in which it was said the only thing lacking was snow. It was about 475 feet tall, made completely from marble. The guiding light that burned at the top of the lighthouse could be seen by a ship over eight miles away. Behind the fire, there was a mirror that served the same function as a modern day lighthouse. of Alexandria was built both for communication and for information management systems. It can be stated that the lighthouse was one large information processing mechanism, especially since later a gigantic library was built in the city of Alexandria. All the knowledge of that time was collected here. This lighthouse served the important function of dispatching this knowledge to the world via optical communication. This lighthouse was certainly not only for the purpose of guiding ships, rather it was to broadcast the wisdom of Alexandria. This system resembles very much the optical communication systems that the metro culture of today is attempting to create for the information highway. Perhaps eventually, the infrastructure that is yet to be created in future cities will resemble the image of Alexandria. This is a map of the island of Rhodes, our next destination. Giant statue. 
statue that stood at the entrance to the harbor of the island of Rhodes was the Colossus. When the army of Macedonia attacked them, the Egyptian king Ptolemy I sent reinforcements to help the people of Rhodes. The citizens created the statue from the bronze weapons left behind by the retreating Macedonian army. It was a statue of Apollo, the protective god of the islands. It took 12 years to complete. Its perfect proportions were proof of the advanced technology of the time. A spiral staircase led to a room in the open eyes of the statue. From the 130-foot height, one could even see Egypt. It is said that there was a huge statue of Apollo on the island of Rhodes. Where could this island have been? Let's consider somewhere in the Mediterranean. To the west, the world supposedly ended in a huge waterfall. So, it must have been someplace to the east, toward Turkey and the Orient. The island of Rhodes sat directly on the border between Europe and the Orient. Most likely, because Apollo was the god of the sun and the east, the statue was built in the east. The island was a place where east met west, where people, cultures, and trade all mixed together like the waterfront areas of today. Many rules were created that were completely different from the cultures that surrounded the area. We would call it an economic free trade zone today. On the island, many different people came and went, and it served as a checkpoint as well as a customs area. Something like a symbol or gate in a modern day city, or like an ancient Hong Kong. The Temple of Zeus is a place for the reverence of the God of Men. Different from the Goddess of Women, the God of Men represents the Sun. Overflowing energy, showering ambition endlessly. On the other hand, very fickle. He moves continuously from beautiful things to fun things. And this is a trait created by the energy of the Sun. This is the power that gives birth to new things, creates new environments that grow and increase. Zeus gives this power to us. This sanctuary is the origin of progress, advancement, and expansion. It provided for the development of commerce and politics, and thus the modern city. At the heart of economic activity, all forms of intellectual effort and negotiation are the powers that Zeus gives. is the great 
shrine of the goddess Diana. This beautiful shining shrine is twice the size, height, and number of columns as the famous Parthenon at Athens. There are 127 Ionian-style columns in all. The entire shrine is made of pure white marble. This shrine was built by King Chrysus in Lydia, which was the richest area in the 6th century BC world from trade throughout Asia Minor. It took 120 years to complete. The goddess Diana was called Artemis in Greek. She had many breasts representing prosperity and quite a sensual figure. The Shrine of the Great Goddess Diana. The important word here is goddess or female god. Diana was the goddess of the moon, the symbol of night. Unlike the sun, the moon does not emit its own light. It receives light from elsewhere and reflects back an extremely soft light. The human eye is too weak to look at the sun. We cannot see it. But in the moonlight, the companion looks unusually beautiful. The idea that one falls in love on a moonlit night because one's mate appears beautiful comes from this fact, the quenching nature of the moon the gentle mood created by the moon. This is the power of the goddess. The goddess that symbolizes this naturally becomes the core of healing powers. In an average city, this healing takes place in a public space, a promenade, a park, somewhere that provides peace. The goddess Diana gives kindness to people. She is a place where peace can be found. Okay, the next destination is the Mausoleum at Halicarnassus. that flourished in Asia Minor during the mid-4th century BC. The edifice that towers over the central square is the Mausoleum of Mausolus, built by Queen Artemisia, the most opulent tomb ever constructed. We derive the word mausoleum from his name. To build this mammoth mausoleum, the best architects and sculptors were summoned from all over Greece. But Queen Artemisia never saw the completed structure. She died two years after her husband, Marble statues of the king and queen riding their horse carriages stand close together on top of the mausoleum. The mausoleum of Harlequinosis was built by the queen to honor the death of King Mausolus. The mausoleum is not only a place where the dead are laid to rest, but also a place for those still alive to visit where the memory of the deceased is preserved forever. A place for family members to offer flowers and converse with the dead. It becomes a place in a large city where traditions are given the strength to continue. Palace 
square are the Hanging Gardens, fed by water from the Euphrates River. The Hanging Gardens were built by the ruler of the New Babylonian Empire, King Nebuchadnezzar II. There were many fruit trees and medicinal plants lining the large terraces. Because Babylon was dry and had little rainfall, the king pumped water into rooftop tanks and made artificial rain for his gardens. It is said that the king created the gardens to please Queen Amethyst as a remembrance of her upbringing in the mountainous country of Medea. of Babylon were not simply gardens. They were ecological gardens, employing extremely advanced techniques. The gardens were built in the middle of a desert where there was no foliage. How was it possible to build a garden in such a desolate place? The answer is in the word hanging. Notice how the gardens hang down from a very high level, created in steps and terraces. Why was this form of layering necessary? One reason was to let sunshine reach all the plants. Another was to allow water to flow down through all the levels. Most likely nutrients that aided growth were added to the plants. Today we call this hydroagriculture or hydroponics. It was a man-made growth mechanism, a structure built as an ecological or even a biotechnological space for the creation of completely new fauna. It is proof of how the people of that time realized the importance of greenery. Congratulations! You've collected all seven wonder maps. In all the seven wonder zones, it is said there existed seven imaginal beasts with mysterious powers that protected each zone. Once all of these seven beasts have been brought back to life, the Great Alamutter Library will be recreated. From this, we will be able to gain broad and powerful knowledge. Okay, let's go and find all the imaginal beasts. After selecting the coin icons, press the A button to bring the imaginal beasts back to life. By pressing the maze icon, you can go back to the Island of Rhodes. The Sphinx is the imaginary beast that protects the pyramids of Giza. Greek mythology tells of the riddle asked by a Sphinx. What walks on four legs in the morning, two legs at noon, and three legs in the evening? The answer is human life. The question the Sphinx asked is one of cycle. That which prospers eventually dies out. Then it is reborn. Prehistory and early civilizations were acutely aware of this cycle. Because of this, a sphinx was placed in front of the pyramids to give them a cyclical image. However, our modern civilization that creates our cities has little or none of this cyclical consciousness. The lighthouse broadcast information that guided ships into the Nile River and stirred up communication with the world. 
When I think of what beast might be associated with the lighthouse, a dragon certainly comes to mind. The eastern and western ideas of dragons are quite different. The western dragon is a fierce, fire-breathing beast. Like the rays shining from the lighthouse, the dragon breathes fire to announce its existence. The dragon carries fire inside its body. It dwells in water to cool itself. If it fails to do so, it will burn to death. In the Mediterranean Sea, there is another kind called the sea dragon. It swims about freely and often approaches the beacon of a lighthouse. The lighthouse is the parent of the dragon. In this sense, there is no better imaginary beast than a dragon for the lighthouse. The statue of Apollo was built in a port city. What kind of imaginary beast might have lived there? It is written in Greek mythology that Apollo's son was a triton. The image of a triton is similar to a dolphin. It traverses the open seas, carrying with it various news and information, and sometimes even bringing trade goods. It also brings good fortune. It is like the role the whale played in early Japanese history. The whale, because it brought many things to the people, was called the visitor. The dolphin in the Mediterranean world brought wealth to those who came in contact with it. The triton was created in the image of a dolphin. The triton was truly the protector of the island of Rhodes. Zeus, the god of men, the god that goes forward with unlimited ambition. For him, there is no better imaginary beast than Pan. Pan is also called the satyr. He represents the wild side of men and is always chasing after young women. Depending upon how you view him, he can also be called the demon of ambition. He is truly a Zeus-like god, but when Pan becomes active, he brings about panic. It is very important to uphold order in large cities, but when Pan enters cities and suddenly shows the wild side of men, he creates panic. Symbolically, when he creates an economic panic, he in turn creates chaos. Pan possesses the power to promote economic activity, but when he appears in crude form, he brings about havoc. This is one of the very weak points of the male god. What would be an appropriate beast for the goddess of healing? The snake is very suitable as it represents rebirth. A woman is usually considered as the even number of two. Why is this so? 
because two is the number that is fulfilling and just sufficient, neither too much nor too little. A woman in the same way is exact. She is where ample healing is created. What then is a snake that represents two? In ancient times there was a snake with two heads, called Antespina in Mediterranean culture. This snake coiled around a type of cane called caduceus and was a symbol of healing. Today, it is depicted as two snakes coiled around a winged shaft, used by doctors to represent healing powers. The even-numbered snake truly possesses healing powers. For Diana, there is no better beast than Antisbina. There were many causes of death for the Mediterranean kings of ancient times. The most frequent were poisoning and assassination. Many died from drinking the poison of a bitter enemy. Even though family members prayed for the dead, it was very important to cleanse the body of any poisonous liquid. For this reason, I think it is appropriate for the sacred beast that might have lived in a mausoleum to be a unicorn. A unicorn can purify all poisons with its horn. If a unicorn dips its horn in tainted water, even the strongest toxins will disappear. In a certain sense, the unicorn is the person killed by the bitter enemy. The only thing that can pacify him and cleanse him of the poison is a virgin. A pure, untainted woman can pacify a resented man. The unicorn opens its heart only to such a woman, and this puts it at ease. This is truly a relationship in which a devoted queen can comfort a begrudged king. A unicorn and a virgin, a crazed king and a gentle queen. What exactly was the imaginary beast that lived in the Hanging Gardens of Babylon? One possibility is the imaginary beast known as Manticore, a creature with the body of a lion and the face of a human. It can speak and is basically a humanized lion. A Manticore is completely different from lions found in the wild. Lions were originally the symbol of the desert. Because a manticore was depicted with the face of a human, meant that it had a very friendly relationship with humans. I believe that this lion truly symbolized the Hanging Gardens of Babylon. At present, we humans are trying to return to nature, but I think this will be a very difficult task. Instead, I believe it is important for us to actively create this artificial fauna and then go about taming it. The manticore is a symbol of nature turned human. I believe it is very appropriate for it to be living in such a place as the Hanging Gardens of Babylon.
Try the Goku button to hear how to use the library. Pressing the A button will open the book and enter into the next shuffle zone. Pressing the C button will return to the world of the imaginal beasts. By pressing the direction button left or right, the page shuffle will start. Holding down the button will turn the pages slowly at first and gradually turn faster. Releasing the direction button will stop the shuffling. The index menu will open when you press the A button. Try the Goku button to hear how to use the library. Everyone knows of the healing power of women, especially the ability of a mother or lover to provide calm. But historically, the most famous women were prostitutes. It is said that this is the oldest female profession, but actually, these women played a much more important role in ancient times. When men went to battle and were killed, most of the time it was the prostitutes who grieved for the dead. Because of this, these women always wore two combs in their hair. One was for their own use. The other was used to comb the hair of the dead soldiers before burial. The prostitutes of long ago were truly healers, especially for men who were wounded in battle. There have always been tales of the magical powers of the moon and how it provides us with a wonderful feeling through a very mysterious energy. This, I believe, is related to the moon and women. The moon controls most of the physics of living beings on the earth. It gives birth to eggs, to children, and raises them. Life is born and life dies under full moons and new moons. Women are the lunar power of governance. Unfortunately, man has leaned towards the sun and lost the physical powers of the moon. The moon exists inside a woman's body. By this moon, she governs physics. The gentleness of women, the moon, and physical governance are all interrelated. The mausoleum of Harlekanasus was built by the queen to honor the death of King Mausolus. The mausoleum is not only a place where the dead are laid to rest, but also a place for those still alive to visit where the memory of the deceased is preserved forever.
There are many theories behind the statue of Apollo at Rhodes. The most popular of these is that the statue stood with legs apart and ships went in and out under this arch. The ancient drawings of the Seven Wonders seem to support this theory. But a statue standing with legs apart is quite difficult in an engineering and architectural sense. The popular view today is that the people of ancient times could not have built such a structure and that most likely the statue's legs were closed. But for two reasons, I think the image with legs apart is correct. The first is that this is, after all, a wonder, a miracle built completely by humans. People undertook this task knowing it was extremely difficult in a mathematical sense for the statue to have its legs apart. Another reason is derived from a very real problem. The fact that boats went in and out and new trade took place. It was a huge passageway and there must have been a gate. Most likely, Apollo's spread legs served as the gate. It is very plausible to think of Apollo's legs as straddling the two sides of the harbor. The index menu selected in the shuffle zone will open. Use the direction button to select items you wish to see, then press the A button to access your choices. Use back and next to open menus that are before or after your present location. The index menu selects The index menu selected in